Welcome to the video. This is the first video in a series I'm doing on Norse mythology. This is just kind of a chill video. I'm kind of doing it for my grandkids, but if you enjoy it, please hit the like button. It's very important to get us into the algorithm. And uh, just a couple things. The words are really hard to pronounce. I'm doing the best I can with them. I apologize if I don't do them justice. And there may be EVPs in the background. Um, this will be my 13th try at the audio on this video. I was uploading it yesterday, a finished video, to YouTube. And somehow it mysteriously got deleted. All three copies. <laughs> So, here we go again with take number 13. Pray that it works. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit the like button. It is very important. It gets us out into the algorithm. Thank you. Namaste. In the beginning, before anything else existed, there was only a huge dark nothingness. And this formed the great abyss, Janunga Gap. And out of this void emerged two realms. The realm of ice, called Niflheim. It's also called the Mist World. Niflheim lies to the north of the abyss. It is a frozen land of ice, snow, rain, and fog. To the south of the abyss lies the realm of fire, Musselheim. Musselheim is a scorching land of lava, heat, fire, and soot. In Niflheim, there's a well and a spring called the Virgilmer. This spring branches out into 12 smaller streams, forming a river system called the Alivagar. Now, there's 12 rivers. They all have individual names, but I didn't go into all that. But they all fall under the name of the Olivagar. One of these rivers is called the Joel. The Joel has a bridge, and once you cross it, you can't come back out of it. It separates the living from the dead. These rivers flow through the Janunga Gap. It being so cold and frozen in Niflheim, that Niflheim formed these big solid sheets of ice. And the Levigar rivers carried them in towards the Janunga Gap. Also coming towards the Janunga Gap, was the fires from Muselheim. They were spreading in all directions. Eventually, the fires from Muselheim and the sheets of ice from Niflheim met in the gap, and they danced. And as they danced with each other, the ice began to melt, and from its droplets, was formed all the living. And the first of the living was a living being named Emir. 
His name means screamer. And Emir was a giant. Now, Emir the giant was a hermorphodite. And it is said that he conceived as he was sleeping. He started sweating, and the sweat from his armpits produced two more giants, one male and one female. It is said, and I quote, that they spontaneously sprang forth, end quote. Then his legs paired together and created another son, the giant Threadgilmer, and his name means Strength Yeller. And this was the beginning of the Frost Giants. Also coming from the melting ice was a cow who fed the giant, and her name was Aldid Humla. And that means, her name means abundance of humming. She would feed a mirror and they would, you know, spend all their time together. She nourished the baby giants. And all did Humla like to lick the salt from the melting ice, the salt brine. And one day as she was licking her salt block, she noticed something really strange. Some hair began to show in the ice. And on the second day, a head appeared attached to that hair. And on the third day, a whole body appeared to her. So she licked harder and finally a man was able to escape the salt. His name was Burry, and he was the very first a seer. Burry was also a giant. Later, he somehow married and has a son named Boar. Now, Boar married Besla, and Besla was the first female giant that Emir had sparked. And Boar and Besla went on to have three sons. Odin, who became the Allfather and also became chief of the Asir gods. Vili, whose name means wheel. And Va, whose name means temple. Now, Odin and his brothers, they didn't like the fact that the giants way outnumbered the Asir. The giants were constantly having new baby giants. The only solution that Odin, Vili, and Va could come to was to kill the giant Amir. So they waited for Emir to fall asleep, and then they attacked him. It was a horrible battle. They fought and fought and fought, but finally the Assyrians were able to take the giant Emir. There was so much blood shooting out from Emir's body that almost all of the other giants drowned in the huge flood of blood. Only two giants survived, Berglamir and his wife, and they fled in a small boat and found a safe place in the land of mist. And Berglamir and his wife were aided by Odin's son, Veder. Isn't that something? All future frost giants are descended from Berglamir and his wife. His wife was unnamed. I couldn't find her name. So Odin and his brothers dragged Emir's bloodied, lifeless body to the center of Janunga Gap. And there they created the worlds from his remains.
The poetic Edda, Grimness Mall, is also called the Song of the Hooded One, puts it like this, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not quoting. From Emir's body, the blood became the oceans, rivers, and lakes. His flesh became the land. His bones formed the mountains, and his teeth were made into rocks. His hair became the grass and the trees, and his eyelashes became Midgard, home to the sons of man. And from his brains they sculpted the grim clouds. His skull became the sky. It would be the lid that covered the new world. They took sparks from the fires of Muselheim, and they threw them up in the sky, and they gleamed and shined at night, and they were called stars. On the plains of Idaval, they built Asgard as a home for the gods. Then they built Jotunheim, a home for the giants. As they were building these worlds from the giant Emir's bloody body, worms and maggots began to crawl all over the rotting flesh. And out of these worms and maggots came little men. And they called them dwarves. Odin and his brothers were having a discussion. They were just so scared that the skull sky might fall. So they assigned four of these dwarves to hold the skull up in the sky. And this formed the four cardinal points. To the north was Nordy, to the south was Sundry, to the east was Austri, and to the west was Vestry. And the dwarves made their homes in the rocks and caves and underground in Midgard, and they called it not a villa. They also made a place for the black elves called Svartalheim. The black elves share a realm with the dwarves that live in Not a Valor. Now, on creating the humans, I got two different sources and two different things. On one of them, it was Odin, Vili, and Va. And on the other, it was Odin, Lothar, who is actually Vili, and Honer, Odin's other brother. So I'm not sure, but we're going to go with it. One day, the gods Odin, Vili, and Va, or Odin, Lothar, and Honer, were walking by the sea. They come across two big pieces of driftwood, a piece of ash and a piece of elm. Out of the ash, they fashioned the first human, a man, and they named him Ask. Out of the piece of elm, they fashioned the first female, and they named her Embla. And they gifted them. Odin gifted them soul. And Lothar, or Vili, gifted them movement, mind, and intellect. And Honer, or Va, depending on which story you read, give them the ability to reason, shape, speech, emotions, and the five senses. They clothed the humans, asking Embla, and put them into Midgard, where they populated the world with lots of little Vikings. In Midgard, there was a man named Mundelfairy, and Mundelfairy had two children that were very shiny and beautiful. So he named them, named the boy Manny, 
which means moon, and he named the girl Sol, which means sun. The gods became furious. They thought that the man was arrogant, so they took the children and put them up in the sky. They were fated to ride in a chariot across the sky pulled by horses. Sol was fated to be pulled by two horses, Arv Arker and Osveder. Under her chariot was a shield called Valin that protects the earth from the flames. Manny was only pulled across the sky in his chariot by one horse, Osveder. Manny stole two children to help him drive his chariot, Bill and Yuki. They are chased each night and day across the sky by two wolves named Skull, which means treachery, and Hati, which means hate. Hati bites the moon every night, and the moon gets away and heals itself. The wolves will catch the sun and the moon eventually on the day of Ragnarok. There's also the story of the giant Narfi. He had a two children also. It's basically the same story. Their roles are just reversed. He had a daughter called Nott. She personified the night. He had a son called Dagger, and he personified the day. And they both ride in a chariot pulled across the sky by horses, except for the horses are different. Nott's horse is Rimfaxi, and he and Dagger's horse is Skin Faxi. They're chased by the same two wolves, Skull and Hottie. And this becomes a little bit confusing, but again, they catch them on the day of Ragnarok. And it's basically the same story, except for the male represents the day instead of the night, and the female represents the night instead of the day, like in the uh, sun and moon story. And that's pretty much all I got for creation. So in summary, we seen that in the beginning there was nothing, and then there was the Janunga Gap. We had two realms. Then we seen the fire and the ice meet together and the ice melted and we got living beings the first one being a mirror then we seen a mirror put off little giants then we met Audit Humbla the cosmic cow who found Burry in a salt lick and then Burry had a son who married Besla Emir's one of Emir's giants and they had the Asir gods Odin Vili, Va, Honer, and many more. And now we've seen the beginning of the seer. Then we've seen those same gods kill Emir. Then we've seen almost all the other giants drown in Emir's blood flood, with only Berglamir and his wife escaping. And there we have the, the lineage of the frost giants. Then we seen the gods take Ymir's body and fashion seven more realms out of it. We already had Niflheim, realm of ice, and Muselheim, the realm of fire. So then they fashioned, we had Asgard, home of the Asir, Jotunheim, home of the frost giants, Midgard, home of the mortal men, Vanaheim, home of the veneer gods, Night of Valor, home of the dwarves, Svortalheim, home of the dark elves, and Alfheim, home of the light elves, and then we had Helheim, which is the realm of the dead. We've seen the dwarves come out of the worms and maggots on Emir's body. We've seen the skull sky get held up by the dwarves. We've seen sparks from Muselheim turn into stars in the night sky. We've seen the sun and the moon be hung in the sky. We've seen the day and night, and we've seen them all, the sun, the moon, the day, the night, all get chased across the sky where we met the wolves, Skull, and Hottie, and we met four horses, Arvaker, Osveder, 
Rimfaxi and Skinfaxi. Then we seen the gods uh, make humans, and we seen them be placed in Midgard to populate the world. And that pretty much is, is it in summary. Stay tuned for next time. We'll be going over the nine worlds individually and Gadrasil, the world tree, and some more creatures in Norse mythology. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button. It's very, very important to get us out into the algorithm. And thank you again. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.